Alrighty. Let's see if I can go ahead and start some people here. And we shall see what happens. Let us see. So far, we don't have any guests, but hopefully you guys are going to join me for this tutorial. We're going to start making a ribbon skirt. So basically what I wanted to do was talk to you a little bit. Oh, I've got someone watching. This is great. Talk to you guys a little bit about, um, about native culture and about where ribbon skirts come from in the first place. And it goes a long way ways away. I mean, some people will say, oh, they came from my tribe or they came from my tribe. You know what? They're all wrong. That's <laughs> Ribbon skirts have been around for generations and generations. They are made from a time when the fur trade and the French came here and ribbons were readily ac accessible. Now, I will go further and let you know the U.S. government confiscated so many aspects of Native culture, from language to children to even the beading material that we use. So, like, anything you made something out of, they would take away. Whether it was food, tentanka, um, kill, the, kill the Indian and save the man is what they said. So, you know... We are literally here as a, an echo of our ancestors' prayers. And one of the things they wouldn't want us to do is fight over silly things like where did the ribbon skirt come from? Because in that time, they didn't have the things that they have readily available to them now and to us now. And they literally would use, because a lot of the tribes, like even the Apache, they would do this as a form of um, resistance and strength showing I'm sacred, I have reverence for myself and respect for myself even if you show me none. Um, it was to say, I am here. You can't stifle my inner beauty and my voice because this is me. I'm color, I am a message. And over time, women would wear their skirts with pride. And I was taught that when you go into ceremony, you always wear the appropriate clothing. You don't, you don't wear, you don't go in with crop tops and stretch pants. You just don't do that. You know, you wear your appropriate, your appropriate um, ceremonial or, or, you know, regalia or whatever it is you're going to be wearing. But you want to be modest. You know, you don't want to be showing everything and having it all hang out. <laughs> so ribbon skirts actually came from a time when ribbon was tradable. Hi everyone. Um, ribbon, ribbons was tradable. It was something that was an easy commodity. It was gaining popularity from Europe coming over here. Um, the beading material that people had and the tools that they were able to use, even making jewelry out of silver dollars was made outlawed. Is that's what my people did, the Diné. They're they're some of the best silversmiths you can find. They're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. But you know, the thing is, is that when they took away those things, we found other ways. And I have this book, and I just wanted to read this little part. This is written by, by someone that I know, and um, he's a chief at the Taino. But anyways, he was talking about his wife, Laura Lynn, and she's a doctor. Uh, she's Cherokee also. Uh, she's full-blooded, or as close to as we can get at this point, day and age. Um, so... She, they were talking about going into a museum, and um, he's a deeply devout man. He's very spiritual, and they were talking about going into the museum and seeing these three beautiful, beautiful, um, these 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 beaded. I mean, not beaded, painted. Um, let me just read it to you. My eyes focused on what was behind the place where my where where I placed my hands on the glass while trying to get my wet noodle legs to work and read the little plaque above my hand that read, please do not take any pictures out of respect. I slowly regained, I slowly regained control of my legs. My heart was beating rapidly and the presence of the Holy Spirit was still there. My gaze then gingerly fell upon the dresses trapped in time behind the protective glass. They were ghost dance dresses. I knew it as soon as I saw them because of the beautiful stars painted along the top. 
and the descending doves from the heavens and the crosses prayerfully painted into the buckskin. There was no intricate beadwork or incredible quill work because the government took away all the tools needed to be able to make beautiful the beauty of the Lakota woman would normally have adorned their dresses with. Um, and this was common. I stood in awe and then noticed the bullet holes and the stains of blood. And at that moment, I slowly dropped down to my knees. I had a vision like I was walking. I was watching something on television of what happened at Wounded Knee. I saw these women dancing and then the bullets ripped through their dresses. I was overtaken with grief and began to weep unconsolably. I didn't care who walked by and saw this warrior crying. I felt the heart-rendering mourning, mourning over what had happening, happened to the women wearing those dresses, yet also recognized the anointing on these dresses that the women had prayed over while they were painting and preparing their priestly garments to dance before the Creator. And there's a picture of the, the ghost dance. So, you know, basically these things were taken away and in a, in a way to be able to say, you can't break us, we're resilient, we're here, we're sacred. We have honor for ourselves. We see our beauty. We're, we're showing you, we have this inside of us. It was a message. And now um, that is something that has been for generations. And, and I am talking generations, the ones that prayed for you and everybody else to be here, those kind of generations. Um, you know, I have seen pictures in circa 1903 from Apache women standing in a circle praying and um, doing their, their ceremony. So I can honestly say that, that when I've seen some discussion on people saying, well, should we actually let people wear ribbon skirts? You know what? We do not own ribbon. <laughs> it came from Europe, but we do have a connection with the story that it tells, but many others do too. And I think, um, and, th and this is common when I've talked to other women who make ribbon skirts, this is very common for people to say, um, back and forth. Oh, well, it's our, it's our, no, you know, this is, we need allies too. And so to share this knowledge and to share this teaching and this honor and this respect, when someone holds that with, rever with reverence and respect, we, we love that because our culture is so important to us and, and we're trying to keep it alive and revive. So, so this, this will be a little bit of a tutorial and we'll go along and talk during this and I'll, I'll have to get close to read your comments because I can't see without my glasses. So Miss Stephanie and I had to talk about that because I lost my glasses. <laughs> Evacuation. <laughs> so anyways, um, we're going to get started on the ribbon making tutorial, but I just wanted to welcome everybody that's here and say thank you for coming. And I look forward to seeing everybody's ribbon skirt afterward. Now, sometimes people wear, um, when sometimes when people will use ribbon, let me grab my, my orange, hold on real quick. Um, when people will use their ribbon, they will, here we go. Okay, so I stuck them in bags so I could be better organized. <laughs> Thank you ladies for making the bags because it helped me organize the ribbon so I didn't have everything falling all over the place today. Um, so when you have ribbon, you're gonna have two types. You're gonna have the satin, which is complete satin like this. And then you're gonna have the one-sided satin. And the one-sided satin is usually just like this. And when you sew it on, it's going to look just like the other satin. So I actually pay a lot of money for this orange because we couldn't get it. Orange was sold out on everything except for this one. And it's really expensive. But if you can get the, um, the other satin, it's far less expensive. And I would encourage you to, to look at their colors because they have some really pretty colors and, and, and stuff like that. Um, as for for um any ribbon skirt now for myself i'll start like let me move this i started by saging a little bit of my my area because i like to do everything in a prayerful way and that's just part of my way um so so that's really that's already done and then what we're going then what i usually do is i will determine what it is I want to use. What am I thinking about? What is my, what is my ribbon skirt conveying? Is it supposed to have a message or is it supposed to represent my tribe or something that I really am passionate about, which is water because water is life and it's our ancestor. We have, we are 98% water 
And so it's the oldest ancestor that we have, and it's beautiful. And when we pray to water, it evaporates and goes to Creator. And so that's that's a beautiful thing. And so always give thanks to your water and ask for blessings and prayers because Creator hears that when it evaporates. You know, um, is your skirt water? I have one right now I can show you, and it is about water. And... This is one that's already pinned. Uh, one is pinned, so one's not done, but the other one is done, um, other than adding the turtles to it, because Miss Hillary <laughs> loves turtles. So this will be the sky, and there's little uh, drops of rain, and then this has waves all the way around it, and it's just, you know, the layers, and then the sky are the blues. So is yours conveying a message? Is it supposed to be a scenery? This is the ocean and the sky, the blues, and then the oceans and the deeps, the, the aquas and the greens. So I was trying to convey that message. And then I have some little um, turtles that are gonna be swimming in here that I'll applique on them later on. So, but otherwise you have other ones. Now, it's pretty simple to understand you know, the difference is, and I'll take you over here for a minute. There you are. Um, let me get a bigger light here. I don't want to blast you guys with the light while I'm close up. But over here, these are, this is a theme. It's not really a message, but it's a theme. It's got a winter scene on it. It's got the sky up above. And it's for a theme. This is a prayer skirt for a little girl. It's got the hummingbirds because the hummingbirds go up to heaven. This is a little skirt for my granddaughter, and it's got hearts on it with little hearts all the way around, applique on. So basically, your, your thing doesn't, you don't have to have a message. Here's one. Miss Patty sent me this material, and I wanted to get this done so bad today to show you. This is what, this is just represents me. This is all. I, it represents me. I like the sun ray. Look, see, I like this. This is very much me. If you look at the colors behind me. <laughs> so, so, you know, it has to just represent you. And anything that you're passionate about. And if you wear it with respect and honor, that's all we can hope for and ask of you. And we love that about you guys. So thank you for wanting to know more about this. Thank you for coming and let's get started. So, okay, this is the one I will be making right here. Now, last night, I went ahead and I got a little bit ahead and so that you guys could see how I'm doing this, all right? So, basically, you're going to have a whole bunch of fabric and we're going to show you how to lay it out like this. You don't have to have this many rows. And you can also put your rows together. When you put your rows together, you end up, like right here, you end up sewing less because each time you have to go in here, let me show you close up. Each time you have to go one, two, three, four versus one, two, three, if they were together, 